I am. Our um, scripture this morning is from Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead <laughs> to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up, to, up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and, began, and be, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. May God bless the reading and the understanding of God's Word. Thank you very much, Kim. Thank you. So, you know, I just got to admit it, that Jesus is so much nicer than me. He's better than me. He's just healed all these people before this text. You heard about it last week when Pastor Ron was uh, guest preaching. So he's been healing all these people, and then he feeds this crowd of 5,000 hungry folks. And it's still true that he's just heard about the murder of his friend and mentor, John the Baptizer. And yet, when he saw those sick people and those sad people and later that hungry crowd of people, he didn't leave them and say, look, not now. I can't do this. I need some time. I need some space. Look, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little scared about my future. Please, just leave me alone. Instead, Jesus is so much better than me because instead, I know, I know, I'd be crabby. I'd probably be a little weepy, probably scared too. And I'd probably blow them off. But instead, Jesus feeds them. Jesus cares for them. If I ever had a crowd around me and I was under that much stress, I'd probably bolt. But Jesus doesn't. And as we get into this story a little bit more this week, I think maybe Jesus is a little bit more like me than I realized at first because I think he's so much better than me. I mean, our story picks up when Jesus makes the disciples get into the boat without him. And he finally sends the crowd home. And after he's taken care of the crowd of 5,000 and the 12 disciples who hang on his every word, then he gets away. He goes up on the mountain, by himself. That's what the text says. He goes up to be alone. And he's away all night, all alone, away from it all. He's getting finally a blessed rest from all the work, all the worry, all that healing and feeding and teaching that has consumed every waking minute of his gospel message up to this time. Finally, he's alone somewhat quiet. And maybe he's thinking about John. All John meant to him, the tragic loss of him, his murder at the hands of government. Maybe he was praying for John as well as himself. Maybe he was just resting because he was exhausted because of all the emotion and the drama. So this may seem unrelated, but, you know, um, I read somewhere recently that there's been a significant uptick 
from uh, that has been actually noticed by teachers and families and uh, spoken of on social media, there's been a very significant uptick in little children building forts at home. You know what I mean? Have you ever made a blanket fort? Pillows, chairs, blankets, right? And um, children are building more of them now. Now, I know this is true because at our house, with a certain little someone, it's a bear cave. That's what she calls it. It's a bear cave for mama bear and baby bear. And um, every time we build it, we take in fruit gummies because you know bears eat fruit. And we take in goldfish crackers because you know fish, uh, bears eat fish. And we take a flashlight so it's not too dark. And we even have a cup of water in case anybody gets thirsty and we crawl inside and it's safe and snug and it's away from it all. Even our children, our littlest children, are feeling the need to find a safe place. As some of you know, I went to one of those safe places while I was on vacation. I went to Sidson, our beautiful camp on the shores of Lake Coeur d'Alene. And you know, it is a place of safety and um, beauty and holiness. It's restorative and restful and I did all of that. And boy, I hope you all know about the financial, the funding campaign for our camps. And I hope you're paying into it because as, as Jim and I are, because that camp is a holy space and we need to protect it and conserve it. But anyway, so I was there at camp and it was my version of a bear cave. I was snug, and secure, and my days were full of beauty and the nights were full of stars. Now I know in this story, Jesus didn't get seven days at camp like me. He got one night, but I can still relate to him. He got away for a little bit of quiet and I got away for a little bit of quiet. And when he came down the next morning to the Sea of Galilee, it seems to me that he was rested and renewed and he was powered up. And how do I know this? Because he had enough power to send himself out walking to the disciples as they were tossed about on the Sea of Galilee. And he comes out to them in the midst of their struggle and he's full of power. He's full of renewed energy and he invites them to join him in that energized power and Peter tries and fails. <laughs> he just starts to sink. We're not as powered up as Jesus. <laughs> and now, instead of relating to Jesus, I can relate to the disciples. And I wonder if you do too. You know, Trusting God in the midst of chaos, and by the way, um, a classic symbol of primordial chaos is water, seas, lakes, untamed water. So that the disciples are out there in the middle of chaos, I can really relate to that. And considering the time we're in, I bet you all can, right? And, and to trust God in the midst of that chaos is so hard. So suddenly, I am with the disciples. I get them. And also, as I ponder this story, I realize I can relate to those desperate crowds. And I am with them too. Because they're sick, and they're in need, and they're care caregivers who are bringing them to Jesus. They're desperate for healing. And I'm like, oh yeah, I want Jesus. I want Jesus to get to work and heal everybody of COVID and do it now. And so I really relate to the crowds. I want Jesus to get back down that mountain and feed all those hungry people. And remember all those unemployed people and the people at unfair disadvantage and the neglected people. Get to work, Jesus. And I want him to get busy and calm all the emotional storms 
quiet all the winds of fear and anxiety that I feel, that you feel, that we feel in this time of chaos? Come on, Jesus, settle everything down. So suddenly I don't relate to Jesus. I'm giving up on relating to Jesus. I, I, I know that there's a message in there about him being, it's, it's, he needs to take care of himself, but suddenly my need usurps his need. I've forgotten that he needs a chance to weep for his friend and process his exhaustion. Nope. Nope. When I read this text and I'm relating to the disciples and the hungry, sick crowds, I realize what I want. I want a miracle worker. I want a magic man. I want somebody to do it for me. I want to be like that disciple who was carrying in the boat yelling, whoa, you're a ghost, or whoa, you're the son of God. Because when I do that, it lets me off the hook. Suddenly, it's all about him being God's son, and I'm not. I'm not. I forget that when Jesus came to us 2,000 years ago, his message was to me and to you, I'm a beloved daughter of God. Uh-oh. That we are the empowered and beloved children of God. I have to back down off of my, hey, Jesus, fix it, and realize that Jesus didn't come and share life and witness of God with us to show off miracle working powers. Jesus came to show me how to get it done, how to do it, how to feed the hungry, how to heal the sick. And then take some time, send them home. And then go up on that mountain, take some time for yourself. Go to Simpson, make a bear cave and fill it with goldfish if you need to. And then get going again. Come down off the mountain and feel yourself powered up. Remember whose you are. Remember who is with you. Who is it who looks out for you, as the psalmist would say, night and day and to the ends of the ocean, to the ends of creation? Who is with you in the storms of chaos and in the trials of disease, hunger, sorrow? Remember whose you are and get powered up. Yes, Jesus is my brother, and that's not just pretty talk. Yes, I am the sister of Jesus, and you are the children of a beloved God. We are scared sometimes, and we are weak and selfish sometimes, but Jesus is our brother, and we are the children of God. We are Christ's siblings, and that includes resting and renewing and praying and taking a break and trusting in God's power to move through us. And so we are called to get going again because we know it. Our nation and our world are facing sickness and death because of COVID. And there's terrible unemployment and there's homelessness and there's hunger. There's systemic racism and there's terrible violence and there's vast corruption. There's an enormous crisis in childcare and in mental health care and in education in America. Jesus knows what this is like. 
If we can relate to Jesus, we know his story is our story as well. His days were full of conflict. He knew how to take care of himself in the midst of all of that. And then he knew how to get powered up and get going again. And so I ask Jesus, as we all ask Jesus, give us the same kind of courage that you found. Give us a share of that deep trust that you have in your Father God, your loving parent, your gracious creator. Give us the courage to get out of the boat and walk like you in renewed power. And then, like you, we can do marvelous things marvelous things. We too can be healers and helpers. We can feed and comfort and inspire. We can help to change the world forever as Jesus has. And we can do it right here and right now, right in the middle of COVID, right in our own Sea of Galilee of storm and chaos. Yes, we can. Jesus is our teacher, our guide, our brother, our companion now. We can do this. Yes, we can. So may it be. Amen. <laughs>